So thank you very much uh, for uh, all being here. As co-organizers of this event, for us it's very important to connect between Europe and the US. Um, if there's one message I would like you to take home, is that Europe is cool again, and I'll show you why. This is the digital world. On the left, you see in terabits the trans-border traffic per second, per second. And that is increasing from 2005 to 2020 by a factor of 500. The digital world is a global world. Next to it, you see the largest countries on Earth. Number one, Facebook. And everybody has a digital identity. This is what digital world is all about. It's global and it's growing extremely fast and in many, many areas it outperforms the physical world. A question I often get, why is Google not a European company? Well, Google is not a European company for only one simple reason. Europe lacks a global platform mindset. Because we had Facebook in the Netherlands. It was called Hives. Anybody from the Netherlands had a Hives account? Still has it? Well, probably not because it's gone. We had, in Europe, the World Wide Web far before the World Wide Web was there. It was in France. It was called Minitel. Anybody from France had a Minitel account? Yes? Still have it? No? Gone. We had Facebook in Germany. And now I have to be careful. StudiVZ. Who's from Germany? Had an account? Still have it? No, it's gone. Why are all these things gone? Because it are national initiatives in a global environment. Of course, that doesn't work. Well, you can say it in hindsight. But while we were fighting to get all this stuff done, the global platforms won the real battle. But we learned. And that's why I say Europe is cool again. Who uses Booking.com? Wow, love it. You know where it originated? Amsterdam, come on. Enschede, Enschede. My university, Enschede. The guy that founded Booking.com was at the University of Enschede. Small university, small town, builds a global platform. Yes, we can, is what he says, right? <laughs> who's using, uh, who's knowing Rovio? Do you know Rovio? Who plays Angry Bird? Normally, the number of hands uh, double uh, when that uh, is asked. Yeah? From Finland, right? Spotify was mentioned already before. So we Europeans can build global platforms. Absolutely no problem. It can be done. However, if you look at the world map of where the platform businesses are, situation looks pretty bad. Who knows? this gray spot in Europe. Which company? If you're an expert in the field, you should know it. Starts with a S, ends with a P, and there is an A in the middle. <laughs> Only one. It's not very good, right? So call for action. This needs to change. What are the characteristics of the platform economy? Well, there's one thing that we hate in Europe, and that is the winner takes it all. And maybe that's part of the problem. You have de facto standardization. That's not what we do. We do the jure standardization. Yeah, you see, we are good in Latin. Yeah, we had it before. Asset light or asset less. 
sharing economy is not about sharing. Sharing economy is about quickly building a business without having assets. That's why these things grow so fast, not because everybody wants to share. I want to share gold. Not growing very fast. So you need a method that scales up very well, and digital technology allows you to do that. A cloud infrastructure allows you to deploy a business in no time, and that's why things go so fast, fast scaling. Data is the oil. I'll take you back a couple of years ago when the British discovered oil in the Middle East. Who owned the oil? The British or the people in the Middle East? Who made the money out of it? British Petrol was a company, right? Who profited most? It's the British, the UK government. Got more tax income than royalties paid into the Middle East. We now, 150 years later, maybe, did the situation fundamentally change? So data is the new economy. What's happening today? Who owns the data? All of us. How much do you get from the companies that earn the big money with the data? How much do you get back? So that's one of the big issues that we are having. And it's showing up in privacy, European perspective, big debate, of course. It's showing up in taxation of these companies, how do we distribute the value that is created with our data, and how do we make sure there is a fair return on that investment? And then, of course, you have new business models. Business models in the platform economy are very often lateral value extraction. So the value extraction is not from the core business of the platform, but the value extraction is from advertising which is a lateral exploitation of the functionality. Where are the chances for Europe? And it was mentioned already before. There are a lot of areas where platforms are emerging as we speak. Of course, the whole digitization of our industry is an important thing that will come. And that's more than automation of manufacturing. This is about what is the nature of job? What is the definition of job? How are we going to produce? What does 3D printing with logistic, with co-design, with production? Does production come back into the cities, become the cities, the nation states of the next century? All related to the question of the digital industry. IoT, 5G, the platforms are emerging. It's all over the place. And Europe has a very strong position there. We put GSM in the world, and very successfully. And the other thing is digital health. If there's one continent on Earth where you have the best health system of the world, where people equally benefit from the system, then it's Europe. So we have really huge assets, but of course, we have to do it right. Our organization is about driving this European digital transformation. And the key areas that we have chosen are really about this. We built, and I want to mention that here because there's a lot of scale-ups around, and there's a lot of talk about scale-up. We built, in five years' time, a pan-European accelerator, exactly according to the platform principles. Build something by connecting asset light and scale-up very rapidly. And the result? I don't believe in rankings, unless I'm on it myself, in a favorable position. Number eight in the 20 worldwide global accelerators. We built this in five years. That's how you scale up. And it can be done. Although everybody said, we will never make it. And the best thing, of course, you can't read it, and I won't say it too loud, that reads Microsoft. So you can do it. You can beat the giants by cleverly combining. And that's the whole platform economy. So you should use the same principles when you want to drive the scaling up of your companies, when you drive the instruments, scale up the instruments. It's the application of the same principles. So these are the areas where we work. 
We are an organization that is a partnership. So we grew from 40 partners in 2010 to 150 where we are today, and we are signing up another 30 before Christmas. So we scale up very fast. They contribute. We are heavily supported by the European Commission. They pay around 20% of our total bill. Yeah. So a lot of money is coming from the private, and we are able to mobilize that. As long as you are able to concentrate. When I started, I was recruited when the whole thing was, let's say, designed. We were in five cities working on 11 topics. Because everybody had, apparently, the two hobby horses put in. Today, we are in 14 locations, cities, and we're working on five topics. We bring the power behind a couple of things that matter. And these are the areas that matter. There are the opportunities. And you have to take the risk to make some choices. Because if you want to do it all, you're about peanut butter. It's very good, very tasty, doesn't create the successes you need. I show you just one of the examples that we are deploying, and that's a whole network of European digital industry innovation hubs. And what do we bring together in such a network of innovation hubs? You see they're all over the place. It's a pan-European. We have industry case study providers. It's driven by demand. It's not driven by technology push. And you see one of the demands is predictive maintenance of industrial printers. You can earn a lot of money in doing the maintenance at the right time and not at the moment when the paper jams into the system and you have to dismantle the whole thing and you have no production, you have a lot of damage and what have you. So doing that at the right moment, if you do maintenance every day, you probably have no printing time left. So that was also not the idea of the whole machine. So when do you do it? Open source platform providers. Open source, again, is a scaling philosophy of the platform economy. A lot of resources that combined in a clever way and you mobilize a lot of power that is already there and channel it in the right direction. IoT, and where is it all about? In the end, innovation is about skills, business, and technology. Those three things have to be brought together. We have a saying in the organization, without education, there is no innovation. Things that are new have to be learned. You have to take it up and develop it. And this is actually where we build the competence and innovation centers. Enjoy the break and take a cool European drink. Thank you.